Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, we like kind of wild, outlandish, perhaps even goofball stuff here. And uh, this is a Mini Cooper. As you can see, it's obviously a racing Mini Cooper, but, uh, well, it has one really unusual thing that I think you will find fascinating. This is the kind of more money than brains project that I enjoy. You know, this is really cool. We'll show you what that is in just a minute. Let's meet the, the builder, designer, the owner of this car, Jacques Andres. Jacques, come in in here. How you doing? Good, Jay. How are you? Okay, so we start out with a 2002 Mini Cooper, correct? Yes, sir. And as we know, Mini Coopers are front engine, front wheel drive, correct? Yes. Right, right. But that's not enough for some people. So you put another engine in the back. That's correct, yeah. Another Mini Cooper engine? Absolutely, two of two. Okay. Everything's got two except for steering wheels. Oh, all right, very good. So why not just a big 327 Chevy in the back there? You want to keep it Mini Cooper. Uh, couldn't afford that much horsepower out of one engine. Okay. So I thought if I had two affordable engines, I could meet up to that horsepower reliably. Okay, yeah. so is it a matter of taking the front wheel drive of the front wheel drive Mini literally turning the whole package around and dropping it in the back. It's not as simple as that, but is that the basic idea? That's kind of the basic idea, and okay. actually they, they go in the same direction because right. we're still pulling the, f the same direction. Right. Uh, but pretty much the same. You know, all I had to do was make the mounting points and the cooling system and right. kind of the front of the car in the back yeah. with the rear suspension, but it actually has front suspension in the rear as well. Now, when you turn the key, are you starting each engine individually or they both start at the same time? Individually, yeah. Okay. This car is a two individual packages. Uh, so if the last three hours of your race event, yeah. one kaputs entirely, you can disconnect the shift lever on that particular power oh, plant and run either yeah. the front or the rear engine. Oh, I see. To finish the event rather than throwing in the towel. I see. Well, it's, it's, it's fascinating. and. How complex is this? The, the gas pedal, the throttle works mm -hmm. on both simultaneously. That's correct, right. Okay. And again, they are fly-by-wire, so electronic gas pedals. Right. Right. So I'm not dealing with cables going to carburetors just aligned sure. correctly, so it's actually worked out quite easily. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, it's, that's, yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, Hmm. How about the transmissions? How do you, how does the shift linkage work there? Yeah, well, easy enough too, because this this was always a big barrier with the old cars. You know, this is a model of what they did in the in the '60s with the original twenties, mm -hmm. and they called them twenties. Right. The, so we've you know kind of taken on that name for them as well. And the battle back then was mechanical linkaging, a bunch right. of brackets and sure. pivoting points and so forth. They only lasted about a half an hour if you were lucky. Right. The modern engines are mostly shift by cable. So those push-pull cables, like for boats, to turn the, right. the deal back and forth. So it's actually very simple. Again, another very easy item to make this a two-engine, two-transmission project, which is instead of two shift cables underneath your shift lever, push-pulling, right. I put four. So I fabricate a little bit of bracketry underneath those shift cables of the original shift cables and made 14-foot cables that go along the front of the car and all the way to the back and kind of aim at the car the same as the front does. So that actually, as you'll feel the, the gear lever, right. is actually more supple than some cars with that short shifter stuff in it. Now it looks like you have two tachometers. Absolutely, yeah. So the engines are not together. So do you ever have the, does one ever run ahead of the other? Is that ever a problem? Uh, when one has a misfire, yes. Yeah. Or okay. you melt down the pistons as I've done. Oh, okay. So then you kind of see the RPMs. But actually the, the biggest telltale is the little vacuum gauges because it's supercharged engines. Right. So you really keep your eye on the boost gauges to see how each engine is running in sequence. And uh, you don't run in, in the same class as just single engine Mini Cooper. Oh yes, we do, yes. So when you pull up, do you say, I mean, do you ever get in and just not tell them you have another engine in the back back there? That's, that's right, that's right. <laughs> well, it's, it's fascinating. I, I mean, this, it, this is the kind of thing I really enjoy. Oh, great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Obviously, from a single gas tank. Obviously, you're doing, you're using twice as much fuel. Twice everything. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very. Yeah. Good. And yeah. how how much heavier is this over a standard mini? Well, and yeah, and that's actually my biggest barrier because yeah. this car here is to affordably run down the expensive Porsches down the straightaway, right? And they're 410 horsepower and $200,000 cars, right? Wow. This is a $30,000 car with a lot of oxy-settling and, and, and gas and bending and metal and stuff. And how much horsepower are you getting with the two engines combined? 250 per engine, so hopefully it's 500. 
Oh, so you get a well, You're pulling five clubs. Well, yes, that's the, right. Wow. Right. Okay. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, I haven't yet because I'm still working on the fuel management stuff. No, so I, I think understand. I've been a little bit less. I, I mean, the fact that you've done it at all, the fact that you got it here is, is amazing to me. Great. Um, okay. Well, we know what the front engine engine. That's right. Like. Yeah, Let's that's look right. at the rear. Come yeah, on great. around here. Come on. And obviously, you're doing this on a budget. And, Absolutely. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a all skill and ability. Uh, Curved radiator over Yeah, there. those actually, those radiators are really neat. So that's out of R1 Yamaha motorcycle stuff. Okay. So I do a lot of motorcycle stuff. Right. And it was hard to find kind of some radiators that would work for my rear engine program. So I thought that if I did 2,000 cc motorcycle radiators, it might be the right capacity. Yeah. So that's what I ran with. And they're, and they're curved, which allowed, you know, a nice bit of room for the engine bay. And what have you done to the motors? Are they, is it Corilla rods and all kind of deal? No, not yet. Stuff? Actually, um, I am building uh, a couple of monster engines. These are 1.6 liter engines. Right. And these are just squeezed on the top with a bit of an overdrive on the supercharger. S is for supercharger right. on the minis. So they're about 250 horsepower engines that were normally 180 horsepower right. engines. Um, and our goal now is uh, working with this engine builder who does race car stuff in the right. Bay Area, Hasselgren. Um, we're going to build 1.9 liter engines okay. and hopefully have maybe 325 to 50 horsepower per engine. So for all of this, the two engines, you're about 3.4 liter, right? Uh, right now we're at yeah. 3.2. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And what do we have here? This is a homemade sway bar. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, because I didn't have enough room with the exhaust <laughs> see, yeah. loading there. I said, well, I got to put the sway bar somewhere. Well, a lot clever. of times I don't like sway bars on the back of my car. Yeah, right, right. So that's kind of this weird and actually I, I have a piece of tape over there because some of my hack welding I sometimes have a nickname of J-Hack so J-Hack well, I get that all the time that's me <laughs> well I, well it's nicely done obviously big oh this is neat there. too so I found this wing out of the um, out of the 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 bin of a very prominent Porsche team that's one uh, Daytona and is also one Le Mans and this was a, called a banana wing the early ages of the banana right. wing and I've loved it because it's kind of been out of the wing plane it worked great for the car and then I handmade uh, this upper wing element um, so I'm actually pretty this shaping your own kind of like glider wing to fit to the car was a little fun actually I let's take that. a look at the interior of the car okay there's your Actually, it looks like you got plenty of room for one person anyway. Oh, it's, yeah, very, very roomy in there. There's your two tachometers. That's right. You've got your, uh, I like what you've done there with all of that. It's very nice. Got all your gauges nice and laid out. Yeah. Very cool. It, it's really terrific. And it's sort of, and it's done on a budget, right? You're very not a, much so. I mean, it's, it's, it's this is, uh, uh, after hours of working on the weekends, you know, uh, yeah. buying composite materials from the internet. Um, filling up your, your gas welders, that sort of thing. Well, that's what I think people really appreciate about the website is when we find things. You know, anybody can do a, a money, no option project. I mean, that's obviously. Right. So it's fun to be able to do it on a budget. And uh, are you married with kids and all that? Married with dogs. Oh, married with dogs. It's okay. similar. Anyway, even more expensive. I wonder if this could be a street car. I think it's time to fire it up. Okay, clutch in. Yeah, okay, so well, let's turn on the main power on that on-off switch. To right the here? Right. Nope, nope, the big round one. Okay. Turn to the right. Okay, then we're going to turn on the, the rear engine ignition because that holds a fuel pump. Where are we? This one here. Okay. Okay, then we're going to turn on the fuel pump, which is this okay. one. Right. Okay, then find a bit of neutral. Okay, then the rear engine first because it starts nicer. This button yep. here? Yeah, go ahead. Then this normal ignition over here. Right here? No, no, right oh. on the key, yep. This one's a little bit more stubborn, but there you go. Pretty cool. See, I That's felt right. the regular Mini was getting too good a mileage, so I want to put another engine in.
that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, listen, you know, you got to make this streetable. I'm sorry. This is uh, this is the ultimate canyon carver. Boy, it's a it's, it's a lot of fun. Boy, it's got a lot of grip, and it's got uh, it feels like 500 horsepower. Oh yeah, great. No, great. no, it really pulls. It's uh, I mean, it's too bad we can't really take it out on the street, but. Anytime you want to go on the racetrack with it, let me know. Hey, we will let you know because this is just the kind of more money than brains thinking we like here at the website. So really good. It's it's fun and it's all done on a budget and it's classic American ingenuity and engineering. So Jacques, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Jack. Check out his website. He, he got a mini. He, he can make it do things for you. See you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs>